What's going on, world? It's your boy, Patrick Michael Strange. This is the NRW, where we always give you the NEW. And you've probably been to our YouTube page and have been like, these picks are like super old, man. What, what have you guys been up to? I know we've seen the reviews, we've seen the interviews, we see the events, we see the cosplay videos, but you guys haven't really done comics in a while. And we know you specialize in comics. Pat, man, what's up with that? Well, I haven't forgotten about y'all. And today I have a special guest because we have a special event going on. So I had to bring in the pros, man. I got my man, Troy Jeffrey Allen from Previews World. He's a consumer marketing editor over there. Uh, let's welcome my man, Troy Jeffrey Allen. What's going on, brother? What's up, people? It's uh, Troy Jeffrey Allen, yeah, from Previews World Weekly. I uh, host a weekly, radio, uh, weekly uh, YouTube show, and I am also the uh, editor for Previews World, and I'm here to help create comics culture along with you. So, yeah, let's get it. Awesome, my man. Well, thank you for coming on. But before me and Troy break it down, we actually got some inside stuff from Marvel. Uh, they put out a cool little YouTube video that they sent over. Here is the trailer for Marvel Comics 1000, and then we'll get right into our thoughts on Marvel Comics 1000. Here you go right now. 2019, Marvel's 80th anniversary. And we've been celebrating each month with smaller events, but we knew we had to do something special. What could we do? get every character and the most brilliant creators into one book and that's where we came up with the idea for Marvel Comics 1000. Marvel Comics 1000 is a huge square bound uh, enormous comic book it's, it's the celebration of 80 years of Marvel publishing and so each page in the book corresponds in some way shape or form to something that was going on in the world of publishing in that year. Additionally, each page in the book was done by a different creative team. It's the widest assortment of creators who have ever been assembled in a single comic book package before. There is a spine story, a through line that runs for the entire issue that was written and built by Al Ewing. And all I can say is, it starts in Marvel Comics number one from 1939. The first panel of the book is the first panel for Marvel Comics number one. But the story goes from there in many different ways as Al weaves us through eight decades of Marvel characters and Marvel history. I don't think it's a huge spoiler to say that the very first page of the book is a human torch story. But we go from there into some uh, very strange places, some characters the Marvelites might have forgotten about. We kind of have like the most famous representatives of Marvel, you know, your Captain Americas, uh, your Black Panthers, your Captain Marvels, right down to characters who like only appeared once. So, you know, all of Marvel is kind of represented characters-wise and, and sort of heroes-wise, sort of tell this overarching mystery. It, it literally is a cornucopia. No matter when you were reading Marvel books and who it was that you loved and what characters you liked, like everybody is represented to some degree in the course of this story. It's really meant to be in one package, an encapsulation of everything that is Marvel. I know one book can be literally everything, but hopefully spiritually, this covers all the bases, will give people a, a, a great reading experience. I could sit here and list to you the creators who are in the book, the characters who are in the book, the different stories that we're gonna be telling, but I don't wanna spoil anything. All I can tell you is you cannot miss this book. It is the ultimate celebration of Marvel Comics. And we are back. Uh, man, I am super excited. A, a lot of amazing content there. Um, but I haven't had a chance to read it, and I think my man Troy, you actually literally just got done peeping it a little bit, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, you, like I, I didn't know, I I didn't realize we uh, we could do this without reading it. Actually, yeah, I ended up reading it. The there whole you go. <laughs> oh, man, man has got it. I, man, I meant to pick it up on the way home today, uh, but I got caught up. It's all um, good. Yeah, today's I'm been a, today's been out. a rough Wednesday. <laughs> you so you needed it. Yeah, needed actually, yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I always love the fact that a uh, new comic book day is uh, is on Hump Day because it kind of like, you know, it's it's just it's the it's like the right amount of like you know adventure and fun like yes. in the middle of the week to kind of get you past all the uh, all the crap. <laughs> so. And that's what comics are meant for, man. You yeah. Know, I, as a kid, my connection to comic books, man, uh, is I was a Navy brat, so I yeah. lived everywhere four years here, four years there, and then I went into oh, yeah. the military myself. And, you know, when you're traveling so much, you don't have, like, that consistent friendship there or 
things that you know and see. But what I could always come back to is the tales of what's going on with Peter in the big city and how he's facing right. down venom and yeah. stuff, you know? So, mm -hmm. you know, comics are a beautiful thing. So, uh, Marvel Comics 1000, man, we have a conglomeration of some of our favorite creators coming together yeah. um, and, and some storylines. What do you think so far and, uh, and of this book, big event? It's the 80th anniversary, I believe. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Marvel's uh, celebrating their 80th anniversary. Um, I actually find it really amusing because, like, all the big heavy hitters, like, all have anniversaries back to back to back. So it's like yeah. Superman the pre two years ago, Batman this year, Marvel's this year. I think Wonder Woman's going to be, like, right around the corner. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's uh, just an interesting time to, like, really kind of reflect on just how the comic book industry came into uh, existence, or, or at least the Golden Age came into existence, and how it was just like a flurry of just unique ideas that created it to help to create an industry so oh, yeah and um yeah this book is like a nice little like nod to like just like marvel's history i wasn't quite sure what to expect from it because they yeah they promised like a a, a laundry list like more than a laundry list of creators involved mm -hmm. and um i actually was fortunate enough to interview cb sabolsky for my show uh oh, awesome. at yeah, at San Diego Comic Con, and like, you know, he he talked it up, and he like explained like, yeah, they reached out to people who were former creators, and actually like, you know, uh, key creators like from the from the Gold and Silver Age and Bronze Age. But oh, on yeah. top of that, um, on top of that, what they also kind of like came across were people that just were Marvel fans that you wouldn't expect to be Marvel fans. Mm. So you end up you end up getting people like Kareem Abdul Jabbar, wow. who's like, you know, who's like. You know, I guess I'm assuming the conversation went like, oh, you like Marvel? Would you like to write a page into one of these stories? And like, he was like, yeah, sure. So, awesome. yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting cross-section of things. And I, the thing that surprised me the most is that uh, this, story is, this story is telling one linear story. But in, oh. the, in between all these stories, it's actually – because each page is a different creative team and a different writer. Okay. Um, I think Al, Al, writer Al Ewing, who did The Ultimates, gets – the most pages out of everybody else, but okay. I have a feeling that's because he's spearheading this project on some level. Okay. Um, and he has, okay. he's trying to tell a story about these, uh, these uh, kind of rogue scientists who, uh, who are trying to hunt down this, this, uh, this mystical mask um, mm -hmm. that uh, has, uh, has been pretty much passed down from like the original human torch, like from the forties, yeah. like, you know, um, it, it ends up exchanging hands with like the black writer from the fifties. And so on and so on. And, like, in between that, we get other vignettes and, like, little, like, you know, winks and nods to Marvel's history. But that is the major arc going through the story. Wow. And so this isn't just a big uh, event book. This is, I mean, this isn't just a, a celebration book, if you will. This mm -hmm. is actually an event book that actually is taking place in the regular universe, the, the continuity right now. It's an con yeah. incontinuity book. Yes, yeah, awesome. continuity book. Like, I mean, there's some there's some little short stories. Like, there's one with Hercules where he's addressing the audience directly. Okay. So, so you know, like you can kind of take that with a grain of salt, whether or not it's actually yeah. in continuity. You know, because it kind of breaks the fourth wall. Although the She Hulk comics did that back <laughs> in the '80s, so maybe maybe it still works. But um, the uh, 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 but uh, ultimately, yeah, it's telling a story that's like just kind of like runs alongside the history of the Marvel universe, and like they originally pitched this as uh, a secret in the marvel universe that you uh, never knew about and of course oh, oh yeah 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 right and of oh, course like you know I, about you but like you know i every now and then the jaded comic book fan kicks and it's like okay yeah sure marvel whatever but <laughs> but it's actually like, like pretty the whole deep. century thing remember that the whole century right yeah, yeah. So, right 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 <laughs> that was a good story though i ain't gonna it lie was. That Shout initial out story, Paul Jenkins. Yeah, that initial story was actually a really great story, um, and uh, but no, I mean, but here's it's kind of a similar thing where it's like, oh, this is kind of a neat little story that they're telling here, and like I'm I'm wondering if it's going to factor into something bigger down the line or not, or if this is just a what a one off. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty interesting. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's fun, and like you get a laundry list of great creators, like people that you might not expect, people who I think technically are contracted to DC. But are that also get like little short stories in here too? So yeah. yeah. Okay, interesting, interesting. I am dying to pick it up. I, I had that on my to do list for today, but just one thing led after another that I didn't get around to it. But uh, amazing comic shop, Painted Visions here in the Woodbridge area. Those are my two closed shops. So I'll be checking you guys out. And okay. if you're watching this as well, make sure you go to your uh, LCS, your local comic shop, and support them and pick this up. Mm -hmm. um, because they need that business, man. We got to support yeah. our comic shops. Yes, please do. Like I, I mean, I'm glad you mentioned that because my job literally is to get uh, get people's butts into comic book stores. And like, I my my pitch is always that comic books, you know, look, 
we've seen the conversations around comics online. They're kind of garbage, like to be honest. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. like they circulate around everything but the story themselves. I, at least I feel personally, I don't want to speak for you, but I feel that's how it works personally. I'm very much a story guy. Like I just want a good story. And um, I feel that like ultimately it's still, regardless of like what you can say about the internet, like comic shops are the community centers where you can get, you have the opportunity to really talk about story with people and really like examine these things and have fun with them again. You yeah. know, and I don't think that the internet's ever going to replace that on any, any real level. At least not as far as I can tell. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I completely agree with that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, um, I'm super excited. So with that being said, uh, there's a lot of amazing creative teams. Why don't we kind of uh, shine a lot on them? Were there a few, uh, since you're the one that had a chance to look at it so far, were there a couple that really uh, caught your eye that you really ha were excited to see? Uh, within um, that? Yeah. And also uh, those so one -offs, those ones that you were talking about that are celebrities that were unknown fans that participated as well that caught yeah. your eye. Yeah, um, you know, actually, it's interesting because there's definitely some writers who are actually writers at Marvel right now um, whose work I'm not familiar with all that much. And so it was actually also really nice to kind of get like a little sample of writing now because like, I, like for whatever reason, I've never read their stuff before. For, um, but uh, yeah, some interesting ones. Like I think Zark, who, I, if I remember correctly, and I could be wrong about this, but he's Seth Rogen's producing partner. Um, and like he writes a story in here. Uh, who else we have here? Uh, Alan Heinberg, who's been a comic book guy for a long time. He actually wrote the Wonder Woman movie. He wrote the OC. Yep. Um, he also wrote Wonder Woman and Young Avengers uh, as comic books back in the day. Uh, Brad Meltzer, who's a local hometown guy. You know, you're in yes. Virginia. I'm in Maryland, but in between us is DC, <laughs> so we call him our hometown guy. Right. He's a local. He's a local, exactly. Um, oh, any other? Uh, what other uh, wild cards in here? Like, uh, t -t 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 -t. I mean, David Walker like uh, pops back in. He hasn't written anything yes. for Marvel in a while. Um, shout out to David. Yeah, he's killing it with Bitter Root. But yeah, yeah. seeing him mm -hmm. over there. Yep, back at Marvel doing doing a little one off. Um, Donnie Cates, who I've always, I've, who I'm such a huge fan of right now. Like, he's probably the best thing working at Marvel right now. Next to. Chip Zdarsky, who's also on this list. Um, Eric Larson, uh, you know, who, oh, of man. course, is like key during the Amazing Spider-Man years. Went off the yes. big Savage Dragon uh, with Image. Uh, who else do we have here? Uh, Gail Simone's in here. Uh, Jerry Conway, if we want to, like, go back to some of the more classic uh, the creators. The Punisher, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, a personal favorite, Goran Parlov, who, like, I've always been a fan, fan of. He's oh, an artist. Yeah. He was the artist on The Punisher. He drew Barracuda, the Garth Ennis story. He's on Hit Girl right now. Um, J. Michael Straczynski, who last time I heard oh. wasn't, on, wasn't on speaking terms with Marvel, so it was nice to see that he returned as well. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Um, uh, who else here? We have Jeff Lemire, who, of course, did Thanos back in the day. Uh, mm -hmm. Jim Chiang, who, like, is a fantastic artist. And, like, oh, anytime yeah. he draws anything, I'm all over it. Uh, Joe Hill, who's got the... Uh, oh. who, uh, speaking of... Uh, um, creators who've son done of, hmm? son of Stephen king uh he yeah. did that fantastic uh, uh, uh lock horror. And key. yes oh my god yeah. i love lock and key yeah yeah and i was like you know i was gonna say like he's somebody who i think he's contracted with dc right now so it's actually yeah. kind of interesting that he's doing this uh jonathan hickman who's writing his powers of x house of x right now which i absolutely love uh kelly sue deconic makes uh yeah. makes a brief appearance here as well um i mentioned kareem abdul jabbar uh, goodness, like, I'm just in the case here, guys. <laughs> uh, Speaking of celebrities, if we get, uh, uh, beyond Kareem, uh, did maybe Colbert, uh, Stephen uh, Colbert, I know he's a huge Marvel fan. Do we yeah. see, is there like a, is there like an A through Z list? Oh, oh you know what? Hold on. Uh, Steve McNiven, Stuart. No, I don't see Colbert on here. Oh, okay. It's, uh, it's going back right. first. It's going by first name. Actually, yeah, I'm kind of surprised by that myself. I mean, Rob Liefeld shows up. Oh, uh, Kurt Busiek, who, of course, wrote Marvels, yes. is in here. Lionel Francis Yu, who's been a staple at Marvel for over a decade. Yeah. Um, Marco Cicchetto, whose name I'm probably saying wrong, but he did Old Man Hawkeye. Um, yeah. And he's, a, he's an artist that a lot of people need to keep an eye on because totally. like, he's a great artist. Uh, Mark Wade, of course. like They couldn't do this mm -hmm. well, Mark Wade. Uh, mm -hmm. Mike Allred. Um, Neil did Gaiman. Bendis come back? Uh, no, Bendis in this. You know, he was the architect, but I, yeah. I but I wouldn't think because he did sign the exclusives, you know, because he's yeah. now bringing his touch to DC. Yeah. But I thought maybe, but no, 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 Bendis on this one actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, but Neil Neil Gaiman's on here, and Neil Gaiman hasn't done a Marvel book in a long time either. Sure. Um, 
Um, also, uh, my personal favorite, longtime favorite, Peter David. Um, yes. all, actually, one that I forgot about that surprised me is Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, who wrote Spider Verse into the Spider Verse and the oh, Lego. Movie. Wow! Yeah, yeah. Twenty One Jump Street. So, like, yeah, they're on here, and yes. they actually do. They actually do a really cool little Spider Man story, which makes me think, like, man, I kind of want to see them do even uh -huh. more Spider Man now. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah uh, Saladin Ahmed, who's doing Miles Morales right now. Uh, Salvador LaRocco, who's another staple of Marvel for several years. Um, Tim Sell and Jeff Loeb are in here as well, and they do a little short story. Um, yeah, and then Walter Simonson, of course. Uh, Tom DeFalco, who's, uh, who's truthfully, if we're going to Marvel fanboy for a little bit, who wrote me a letter when I was 13 years old. So, oh, shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christopher Priest is, of course, in here, and he does a nice little Black Panther story. Actually, the Christopher Priest Black Panther story, I think it's really interesting because he makes it a point in the story, not to give too much away, but it's just a one-page deal. It's but um, Crazy feedback is how he created uh, Redline, is it, with DC? That's with the Suicide Squad? That's yeah. Kind of like the whole talking trash about what they did. Because, you know, they, you know they, they didn't let him finish what he wanted to do. BP right. was with Marvel. Yeah. 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 But um oh also Eduardo Rizzo, who like I'm a big fan of. He did hundred oh, bullets. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like I just love his artwork. Like he just puts so much onto the page. But uh but yeah, back to the Christopher Priest story. He did like a neat one that I thought was actually pretty great, where it's just basically uh Black Panther comes to America and all the uh it seems like all the African Americans uh are kind of like parading for him and like whatnot, and he's kind of like but a reporter asked him, was like, how does it feel to be a black superhero? And he's like, we would not objectify as black superhero, he who was a king. And I was like, that's actually pretty interesting. It's just, it just kind of mm. dives into this concept of like, you know, uh, identity a little bit, just in one yeah. page. Yeah, that, like, that'll be a little controversial. I'm sure, I'm curious mm -hmm. when that, that, when more people, the, the, the you know, uh, popular culture catches that and see how that conversation yeah. continues. Yeah, that'll yeah. be interesting. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I thought that was really interesting. But yeah, it's just it's it's a fun book, and like I mean, it's I forget how much it paid for this, but it's ten bucks. I mean, like you know, I think it's about sixty pages. No, uh, yeah, about sixty pages, give or take. Oh yeah, Actually, you're getting yeah. a deluxe book. Yeah. And then I think wasn't wasn't the the detective comics? Uh, it was a little bit more than regular price when they had that whole Batman anniversary. So yeah, yeah. Along the same Actually, line. Actually, you know, no, of course, it's eighty pages. So yeah, eighty eighty years, eighty pages. There you go. Yeah. And uh, makes right. sense, right? Right, right, right. Okay, um, yeah, so it's a cool one. Like, I like, yeah, I'm, I enjoyed it. Like, it's uh, for a Marvel head like myself, for a Marvel zombie, uh, yes. yeah, this like totally works for me. I will, I'm going to test that Marvel zombie dumb in, in just a few uh -oh. moments. Uh, I just want to just talk, touch upon some of the other uh events uh that I got from Marvel that they're doing in conjunction with uh this Marvel 1000 uh so apparently with this Marvel 1000 it's just not one cover you know how uh, comics do yeah. nowadays you get uh train covers so uh yeah. look for that uh, recently this past weekend uh it was actually uh first launched at D23 they had a special uh version of uh Marvel 1000 at D23 so if you're lucky yeah. enough to visit uh D23 Expo uh in Anaheim there was a special edition there so if you're hungry for that you want to collect them all which uh, a lot of us fans are pokemon in a way right yeah yeah uh, you it's uh, Humberto, so, uh, look on, I think it was Humberto Ramos did that, that did the, the D23 cover yeah mm -hmm. um i have to check here i, to I think i think it was Humberto Ramos you know, you know, you pop that one. Because, yeah, it's like, it's an image of Mickey Mouse giving uh, the yes. Marvel Girls a cake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah. Puerto Ramos and on colors, Edgar Delgado. Nice. nice, uh, nice. So, yeah, cop that if you want to collect them all. But then there is a ton of other variants. And do I have. No, these are just events. But we'll put, you know, we'll, we'll throw them in our W. I'll, I'll put out a. A, a post on our WordPress, but tons of variant covers. Uh, if you're lucky enough to go to Dragon Con this weekend, they're doing a Marvel birthday celebration on the nice. 31st. Nice. So uh, you can take part in that. Are you heading down to Dragon Con at, at all? I, you know, you I've never been to Dragon Con, and that's something that I really need to scratch off my bucket list. Like, hey, mm -hmm. same. Let's do that next year because that's when I'm planning to scratch it off. I got okay. the invite right. to do it this year. Okay. I couldn't put it into the work. So, hey, me and Troy Jeffrey Allen, we are going to uh, scratch it off our bucket list next year. I like it, man. I, I like I like the accountability. We'll both hold each other to this. <laughs> and that's why I brought it up. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with it. I'm totally with it. I want to do it. All right. Uh, it's party con, man. I've heard. It's, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So 
Uh, the Marvel birthday celebration is this 31st at Dragon Con. So uh, if you're in that area, go check it out. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, between now and December, uh, there's going to be a lot of commemorative merchandise uh, from Funko, Hasbro, Loot Crate, um, Diamond Selects, Mattel, Deco Pack, Madigen. I'm sure over you guys over at Previews World are going to have all that news. So make sure you get a copy of Previews. Uh, and or head over to the previous world website. They'll have a listing of all that commemorative merchandise available and, and uh, As well as some local retailers. This is what I find really interesting uh, over at Amazon and Walmart Target Party City Box lunch hot topic unique glow GameStop FYE. They're going to be ha having some in-store uh, activations uh, in regards to this whole uh, 80th uh, celebration of Marvel and uh, Marvel Comics 1000. So check that out. That's going to be pretty cool. That's cool, yeah. Other than, you know, your norm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Marvel Universe of Superheroes uh, exhibition is going on right now, currently right. in uh, Philly until September 11th. Um, yeah. I need to make my way over there prior to September 11th because I've already seen pictures from friends up there. Yeah. Uh -huh. that was yeah. Cool. Have you taken that in yet? I haven't checked it out, actually. And, you know, uh, PA is like a, a hop, skip, and a jump away, at least I'm told, from uh, where I work at uh, Diamond slash Previous World. So I, I, I should have made the trip for that. Yeah. It's, I think probably like less than an hour you do. So you should definitely check that out. Right, I will yeah. make my way up there. That looks really cool. I've seen some of the pictures online already. Uh, so, yeah, check that out there uh, up until September 11th because it's heading uh, in October to Canada. So... You have in America right now up until September 11th, and then on October 19th, it's going to re reopen in, uh, at the TELUS World of Science in Edmonton, Canada. Nice. So uh, check that out. Nice. Um, so a lot of cool events going on with that. So uh, you claim to be a Marvel zombie there, my buddy Troy. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Um, I've got some questions. I, I want to see. Uh, well, I'm not, not going to just be uh, digging to you. It's just kind of to see how much of a Marvel fan in regards to who are some of your favorites and yeah, sure. uh, what what comics did you start with? So, what was your first Marvel comic that you picked up? Um, you know, that's a tough one because uh, I've always had just comics around. I kind of feel. Okay. Uh -huh. um, I want to say the earliest memory I have of a Marvel comic it was actually I found it just a few years ago. Um, it was a anti drug issue. Um, that they were giving away to schools, and it featured Storm and Luke Cage and Spider Man. Wow! And uh, yeah, and like uh, yeah, it was like, uh, and I'm not sure what the book was called. Actually, I have it. I could probably dig it out right now if I wanted. Um, but like, yeah, it was like an anti drug issue that they had released, and it was like okay. the first. It was the first thing I remember owning that was Marvel. Okay. Um, yeah. Like okay. outside of that, yeah. For me, um, I had. The, the cover was ripped off of it. I don't even, uh, I'm sure as a kid, it, it came off. But it was like <laughs> one of those, uh, uh, it was an Incredible Hulk book. It okay. was the early Kirby okay. run uh, of, I think, like the first 20 issues. It was like a digest book, mm -hmm. um, trade paperback in full color. Mm -hmm. um, but it had like the first 20 or so issues. And this is back in like 85, man. Okay, uh, yeah. That I first, it was, I, my first comic was uh, Incredible Hulk. In this digest form, and it was classic Kirby, man. And you had like the Avengers, and I think their third issue or the X Men, but it just made me fall in love with comic books. That that was my introduction. So incredible yeah. hope for me. And the 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 don't do drugs book for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Um, what was the first Marvel series you picked up? So after that first comic, what comic did you pick up regularly when you can finally? you know, mow enough lawns like I did to right, then pay yeah, for your Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, for me, it was, a, it was a paper route, actually. It was real. I was real old school with it. I had a paper route. It was given out <laughs> Washington Post to, like, my neighborhood. Um, you know, uh, it probably was... It probably was X Men number one. It was probably oh. that Jim Lee Chris Claremont deal. I want to say like it was oh. a couple of years. Yeah, probably about a few years later. I think between before that, like I was just kind of picking up comics when I could get them. Yeah. But I think the first time that I did something that was like serialized that I followed from beginning to end was like start started with X Men number one. I want to say. Wow! Awesome! Yeah. And what a way to kick it off. One of the right, best yeah. in the game. And yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Did you have to? Did you try to go collect all the variants, or did you have? Did you have the fold out one or did you have, cause you know how like it had like mm -hmm. a gate fold, right. five, you yeah. know, five or six covers. 
Yeah, and then yeah, had like yeah. the Gateful edition. It was it had a lot. I, it did. <laughs> no, I did. I no, I think um, I know that I had. I know that I had one version of the cover, and I think like over time since okay. 1991, I've like I think I've collected all of them at this point because awesome. they over they overprinted them like crazy, so they're really hard to they're really easy to find. <laughs> okay. Um, for me, uh, the first Marvel series I picked up it was actually not your traditional superhero. Mm. Um, uh, it was GI Joe when oh. uh, Marvel had the life. I was a big 80s baby, and so yeah. uh, uh, living on a military base. Uh, G.I. Joe was the comic that grabbed me because I had to get to go along with the toys. You know, yeah. you had to read the adventures that went along with the cartoon. So yeah, right. they had the whole marketing plan together there. We have mm -hmm. toys, we got the cartoon, and now we got the comic. Yep. We want all of them. So, uh, yeah, G.I. Joe was the first for me, uh, then followed by Amazing Spider-Man. And I kicked it off with, like, Amazing Spider-Man 298, right before Venom was introduced in 300. Oh, nice. The whole right. Todd McFarlane run. And that then was my next ongoing title uh but gi joe is where it started for me nice, so nice, uh nice. next uh thing i have up what do i have on my list here uh favorite hero i know it's probably hard to choose so if you don't want to boil it down to one if you can uh, give me your top three a top three okay we'll do the top three um god uh <laughs> Even that's difficult. Uh, you know, I mean, look, I, I'll say that, like, I mean, ultimately, I think that Spider Man has been the mainstay. Like, I have a Spider Man tattoo. Like, I, like, oh, wow. yeah, I, like, yeah, I, I, I think ultimately Spider Man has been like the most consistent thread. Like, even when I, I was actually on another show uh, not too long ago, and I told them that, like, I always gauge the health of the industry based on what Spider Man's doing. So like, and the, the reason I say that is because like, you know, there were stretches where I just, I wasn't reading comics, you know, and yeah, like, it was like a clone storyline and right. it's when I had to just for a bit. <laughs> exactly. And, um, yeah. And there, then during those stretches, like, you know, I would poke my head back in, I'd be like, well, what can I read? And I was like, well, I can read Spider-Man. And so, you know, depending on what happened, a matter of fact, uh, when the Sam Raimi, uh, Spider-Man movie came out, uh, that was enough of a. A, a push to get me to go back into a comic book store for the first time in, co in like a few years and uh i was around that time the ultimate spider-man was coming out so that just like hooked me in completely like i was just like locked in after that wow you know what yeah. that i started back with ultimate spider-man as well yeah because uh, bagley i loved bagley back, back in the day yeah. and they yeah, were doing yeah. a job it was a reimagining yeah. if you will you know mm -hmm. with, with that whole ultimate line so okay yeah, yeah. Um, um let's Go ahead. Oh yeah, you have you got a couple. Yep. Um, I mean, like, I guess. Oh man, this is a yeah, it's a tough one. I guess. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at my shelf right now. Like, who can I throw out here? Um, uh, currently, actually, well, I can tell you right now. Currently, like, I uh, uh, am a fan of. I, I've actually, you know, in the last couple of years, I've become more and more of a fan of Captain America. As a kid, I did not get Captain America. Like, I just didn't. You know, I just yeah, wasn't. I was you know, I wasn't just on board with him. Um, Mark Wade's run on Captain America in the late '90s got me to kind of like appreciate the character more. Um, and the uh, and then later, I think it was actually until Mark Miller's Ultimates that like I started to read it. And like, I like I I saw a video recently where someone said that uh, they tried to like kind of like frame the uh, the Steve Rogers in that movie versus the the in that book versus the movie version as like a a less friendly ber version, but I think that version is always was intended to be satirical, mm -hmm. like you know like take the the most extreme conservative outlook and just kind of play it up for like for humor, um, yeah. and I I always appreciated that. But then also you go back to the regular six one six and like his values like kind of like they they stay the same, but they also change with the times, which I also thought I think is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, outside of that, number three, I, you know, I'll be hard pressed to say, man, uh, proud, you know, can I just say the X-Men? Uh, I'll just take X-Men general? Yeah, I well, like it. Actually, no, I'm going to take that way because uh -oh. I have group coming up. I've got group coming up. Give me one what? more solo. Give me one okay, more solo. okay, okay. Uh, one more solo character. Man, uh, wow. I'm going to say, actually, you know what? I'll say Daredevil. Because he's like the most hard luck character in the world. Like okay. him and Spider Man are kind of all constantly neck and neck. But like the things that happens to Matt Murdock are like so darkly devastating that yeah, you know. And he's like, I feel like you you read Spider Man to kind of see if he'll get through it. 
Yeah. And you read Daredevil to kind of see how low he's going to go. <laughs> like how. It's true. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'll say Daredevil, yeah. All right. Um, I would echo Spider Man. Spider Man is definitely my top seed. Uh, second up, Black Panther. Okay. I, yeah. I've been a long time Black Panther guy. Um, and then Captain America is kind of vying there slash Thor, to be honest with you. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Actually, you know what? No, Hulk. I, I, I keep forgetting Hulk. about the J Jaws because that was yeah. where it started for me. Right, so, right, right. Actually, you know, I'm going to give you a third to, to Hulk. Okay. So, uh, Spidey, uh, BP, and J Jaws. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> so, uh, thank, you, thank you on that one. Let's go over to the dark side and uh -oh. flip it to the other side of the coin with villain. Oh, okay. This might be a lot <laughs> easier. Yeah. Who we um, got? Um, well, I've always argued that uh, Magneto is my favorite X Men. <laughs> yeah. My favorite, my favorite X Man. I mean, you know, he's sometimes he's on the team, sometimes he's not. But I've yeah. always kind of find him like tragically sympathetic in a way that's kind of like always interesting because like I don't. He'll do things that like you know as a reader I'm like I don't agree with that at all like I'm always rooting for Xavier's side ultimately but like yeah. I feel that Magneto's struggle is such a palpable struggle for truthfully for a person of color <laughs> like you know what I mean like exactly. I know he's I know he's like this old Jewish dude in the comics but like at the same time like there's certain aspects of his personality I'm like yeah I can understand why you'd be like really mad about that and you'd just be like you know what. I'm going to, like, you know, bend all the iron in your body and, like, turn you into a cripple. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, I've also currently been reading um, – I'm final. I'm finishing up Hickman's uh, Secret War. Okay. And I – it just has underlined how much I enjoy Dr. Doom. Like, <laughs> like he's such a jerk. But also, like <laughs> – <laughs> but at the same time, it's interesting because, again, uh, Hickman's doing this weird, oddly sympathetic thing where it's like, um, spoiler alert, they give him the power of a god. And you kind of like, you know, you understand Dr. Doom. You understand he's always been trying to achieve greatness. Like, you know, he's yeah. always like trying to find the new plateau for greatness. And then he gets what he wants. And it's it, se it seems like he's kind of out of place now. He doesn't know quite what to do with it, which I always, which I think kind of is really an interesting layer to that character. Um, outside of that, uh, favorite villain, um, I say I said this was going to be easy, but maybe it's not. We have, um, we have Doom. Is it, yeah. is it, you want, you wanted to give it a third? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I mean, if I have to pick three, um, favorite villain, man. Actually, you know what? Um, a character that I would like to see more of, but every time they make her pop up, I'm like, eh, you know what? Leave her alone. Um, Cassandra Nova. Cassandra Nova is a favorite. Cassandra Nova was introduced in uh, New X Men's, uh, the New X Men run by Grant Morrison. She's basically Xavier's twin sister that was killed in the womb. It's like yeah. the wildest, <laughs> wildest freaking story ever. But she yeah. was just so nasty with it, like just like okay. off the break. So yeah, Cassandra Nova. I'll, I'll say Cassandra Nova. All right, I, I definitely echo uh, Magneto and Doctor Doom, okay. uh, but my third would have to be. Uh, being the Spidey head like you uh, as well. Um, to me, Venom should have never been a good uh, answer. You know what I'm saying? How they've kind of been. Uh, both yeah, yeah. Uh, he's always been better as a bad guy. And to me, yeah. he's he's my third for, for the villains. No, so, like yeah. <laughs> I can respect um, Let's go now to group. I think we already have this one off of your list. The X-Men uh -huh. is on there. but So yeah. favorite group, X-Men? Or is, is are you calling that? Um, you know what? Uh, I'm going to go a little off the reservation here. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say uh, my favorite group would have to be probably the new X-Men, the Grant Morrison X-Men, specifically. Oh, okay. so a specific X-Men team. Yeah, a specific okay. team. Because, you know, they've, they've changed, uh, yes. they've changed ro their roster swaps out quite often. Um, but I would also say uh, another favorite group of mine, probably the Ultimates, because I just got so much joy out of watching like the the Avengers be jerks to each other <laughs> for several. You know what? Yeah, that years. was pretty good. That <laughs> was a classic uh, grouping in what Bendis did with all of that and mm -hmm. having uh, Cap, you know, go at uh, uh, Ant Man or not Ant Man, I, but uh, him yeah. for yeah, using yeah. you know Janet was awesome, and then Hulk. Yeah. You know, running around New York butt naked and right, yeah. that, was, that was good. I love because it was we really got to see a very realistic take 
you know, on these heroes in modern, at that time, that modern, modern time, point, you know? Yeah. And actually my favorite one is actually the second ultimate story because I think that, uh, I was, uh, there's a rumor that, um, uh, the first book is Mark Miller. The second book is, oh, yeah, cred- that's right. is credited to Mark Miller, but mm-hmm. there's a rumor that, uh, Grant Morrison kind of like wrote a lot of it. Oh. And I, when I reread that story, I kind of see that more because like Miller can be very unsympathetic towards his characters, but Grant Morrison always tries to find the more compassionate angle with these, like a lot of these characters. And like, you kind of see that more in the second story arc. Yeah. And also just love this idea of, of uh, the ultimates kind of all kind of stopping for a second and looking at Thor, like, wait a minute, you say you're a God. Why do we believe you? Like that's the entire storyline. And like, I just, I've always loved that. So um yeah, the ultimates for sure. Uh, Did they ever resolve that? Because you know what? That that reminds me. I that I rem- remember that in one of the the post questions because there was you know we kind of had an explanation for how everybody came to be there, but there was a kind of curiosity about Thor. Where, was it he? Was he? Was it a, a different origin in the Ultimate Universe, or was it the same? I can't recall now. So and they, I, and just yeah. No, they, did they follow that thing. up in that second run. Yeah, no, they did. Um, that that's literally the entire arc for that second run. Yeah. I, like, I I highly recommend rereading the second run because it's I, actually a I lot of fun. Because I don't I don't think I even read it all the way through. Yeah, I, it's actually a lot of people say alt the ultimate the first one is good. I actually think the second one is better. Yeah, like okay. yeah, but like yeah, the entire catalyst is just literally like why do we believe Thor when he tells us these things? Yeah, and like everything goes topsy turvy. And on top of that, it's interesting because there's an underlying. Uh, there's an underlying, there's a whole theme about lies, of course, right? Yeah, like yeah. lies that everybody's speaking to each other and lies that we're telling to ourselves. But then there's also this aspect of like the lies that the ultimates are being told by their government and to do things in the name of the government. The book opens yeah. with them going into like diving headfirst into Iraq for just on orders without question. So yeah, it's yeah. a, it's a, it's an interesting one. Like, yeah, it's a, it's a good one. You got me wanting to, to dig into the, the long boxes and find that. And <laughs> okay, well, that's what this is meant to do for everybody watching. You know, we're giving you some of our favorites so you can go and pull those out your box. Or, again, reminder, hit up your LCS and uh, pick up a comic book because they could use that business. Um, so, favorite group, uh, you you had uh, X-Men, the Morrison run, and who, who else did I, I miss? Uh, did you the X- uh, yeah, the Morrison run and then the Ultimates. And okay. uh, uh, I guess uh, if I had to choose three, just off the top of my, my head, I'm picking a lot of things from the early 2000s, I'm realizing. But just off the top of my head, I'd probably say uh, uh, Supreme, uh, Supreme Power. Like, again, just a, a, a version of uh, basically they're the evil Justice League in the Marvel Universe and the Supreme Power run that they did. Uh, it's basically the Squatch and Supreme, but they did an updated version of it in the early 2000s, uh, which was basically like Hyperion being Superman to the fullest extent, but also being kind of completely unchecked. Wonder Woman just being like a, a complete and total savage. <laughs> and like, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a wild book. And uh, it's, an, an, again, an interesting dissection of superheroes. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to keep things just a little bit different uh, and uh, say, well, Avengers will always be there. To me, yeah. there's been a lot of Avengers storylines. I'm not going to break them apart. Uh, mm-hmm. So Avengers is, is their top seed. Um, and only, again, X-Men would uh, X-Men in the past would have been my top seed, but, but they, they to me, there's they got a little convoluted. You know, there was yeah. all the oh, yeah. different iterations and stuff. So oh, yeah. kind of, you know, right. thrown off of the, the them for just doing what they were doing, just playing right. around, around mucking yeah. muck up too much. So right. Avengers kind of took the lead over there, but they're like at one and two. And then I'll say at three, a book that I really enjoyed uh, that one of my artists that used to be part of my studio that I, when I used to write and publish comic books, uh, my guy David Newbold worked with Adrian Alfana and Brian K. Vaughn to do Runaways. And then okay, it eventually yeah. became a whole new series. Yeah, uh, Runaways yeah. is a great book if you didn't get a chance to read that before it became the TV show. Uh, yeah. I was a big fan of that. I like how they did what they did. And uh, I know a lot of people know it for the show, but you should really check out the comic book if you haven't seen that because it's some good stuff. Yeah, 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 it's a good one. All right, so here's here's the, probably the most difficult questions coming up here now. Uh, uh, okay. All right, favorite Marvel comic. Favorite Marvel comic. Oh God. <laughs> so what would be the favorite story? It was a favorite particular series. issue that you can remember that really like made you fall in love with everything. With, with Marvel. Um, 
Uh, God. Oh, man, that's so tough. I mean, you know, it, honestly, it changes with the wind, like, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but, uh, God, I don't want to, I don't want to pick another ultimate book. I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to go around that. Um, right. uh, I'm looking at my shelf trying to think <laughs> here. Uh, you know, I'm just going to do a bunch of stream of consciousness stuff. Favorite Marvel series. Um, you know, I like I will be cliche and say that the Dark Phoenix Saga, because I think the Dark Phoenix Saga made me really understand the X Men. Like I was reading the Jim Lee, Chris Claremont, uh, that that initial run, but it made me interested enough to want to read the older stuff. And uh, I think that was a, it. Was reading that for the first time as a kid made me kind of go like, oh, this is what the X Men are like. Because like I feel like the X Men number one through three. Are kind of a, a a nice like greatest hits of the X Men in a lot of ways, but yeah. to see them like just in a story arc that just like spans like I think it was like ten issues is really good. Yeah. Um, I definitely would say uh, uh, ultimate the Ultimate Galactus trilogy, which I think a lot of people don't give enough credit to. Uh, that was basically Warren Ellis's attempt at updating the Galactus story. Um, yeah. It has some pretty crazy ideas, like the idea that Silver Surfer would be almost worshipped as a, a a religious figure in the yeah. Ultimate World. Um, the the way that they tie in some of the stuff of Wolverine and Captain America to Galactus. There's a cool, there's a actually really underappreciated Misty Knight story arc in there uh, in the Ultimate Galactus trilogy as well. And also a really fun uh, take on um, Janice Vale, Captain uh, Marvel, Captain Marvel. Yeah. Um, actually, speaking of Marvel, uh, Peter David had a fantastic run, an underappreciated run on Captain Marvel um, uh, in the early 2000s. Uh, Captain Marvel has cosmic awareness, mm-hmm. and they did this really, this absolutely beautiful thing where it's cosmic awareness fully, and he goes insane. And like, cause he can just see every possible outcome of all of his actions, no matter what he does. And then he becomes evil. And, uh, they do this great issue, one issue where he talks to the Punisher and he's like, why do you do what you do? And the Punisher explains to him and, you know, they have this exchange, but ultimately the Punisher's like, people think I'm crazy. You're crazy. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah. Uh, uh, outside of that, uh, God. Um, you know, Bendis' Daredevil is great. Born Again, actually, Daredevil Born Again is a great, great story. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 oh, Uncanny X-Force by Rick Remender. Like, it's like probably the last great X-Men book I read in a long time. Like that, again, I'm big on themes and I'm big on storytelling in general. And yeah. this theme about like, what do you do when, what do, what do heroes do when, they're, when they think they're, they're going to go dark and then they're actually faced with a dark task. <laughs> <laughs> and how difficult that is for them. Also, probably the one of the few times I read Deadpool where I actually like sympathize for the character too. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, Secret Avengers. I could keep going, but yeah. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and you actually covered my, my second question, which was going to be your favorite uh, event storyline. And so, oh, okay. So a lot of what you kind of covered that, and it it really does go hand in hand with like your favorite comic because. Some of these events, you know, like really, it sits with you and yeah. really sends the message. So, uh, man, um, this I was trying to ask myself the same question. It's easier <laughs> when you can make somebody else do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I will say the most memorable one for me that made me fall deeper in love with Spider Man was I again, I started right before uh, Venom was introduced and Todd McFarlane became the superstar that he was. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he jumped onto the title of Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, but I'll never forget, like, uh, as a, I've always wanted to get into art and be an artist and create, but it was uh, 300 that introduced Venom, but it was really issue 317, I want to say, when uh, we had Hydra Man uh, and Sandman, I think that was on the cover, Hydra Man holding up uh, Spider-Man uh, on the cover, and that, just the art, just the love that you could see that Todd McFarlane poured it into his pages. And I think I think it was Peter David that was on the writing chores was okay. that McFarlane, if I can recall. I may be, I, I think just, actually, I, I might have been Michelini. It might have been David yeah. Michelini. I think that was just straight um, through David Michelini because Michelini was on it when I started reading, which was probably like a few years after you started reading it. Okay, yeah. Because right. like after it was, because uh, did you start with the Larson run after McFarlane? I started right I, at the tail end of the Larson run. Like I think the first run of spider-man i picked up was larson's uh that that 350 dark uh that 350 um dr doom issue like uh-huh. that then and then mark bagley took over immediately and then, yeah and then bagley yeah. was doing his thing yeah. and then it, we got introduced to carnage and then mm-hmm. all of that 
So yeah, um, so Spider Man is a classic. You know, that's my guy. And then uh, there's been so many events. Uh, I really, I'll say, you know, most recent event. Uh, I would say that I love because they didn't the big screen was Civil War. Um, okay. That that just whole, you know, whether or not we should register again, like you were saying, taking real world application into the comic book and then making you question, you know, should they be registered or not? Yeah. You know. Yeah, should, yeah, you know, having that there. So uh, Civil War was pretty good. There's been a lot of other events. I I'm sure I'm passing up right now, but Civil War still sits with me because, again, the the films actually, to be honest, and that actually leads to the next question. Uh oh. Uh, now seeing them translated to the screen, what yeah. has been your favorite Marvel film thus far? And then the follow up question after that is, what Marvel film do you want to see in the next uh, batch of cinematic universe? Um. Uh, you know, I uh, like uh, my my favorite ones have been basically the Wheaton ones and the Russo movies. Like that's that's pretty much like my bread and butter. Although uh, I will, I do want to point out that the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, like, is way more. Like I think it's way better than the first movie actually. <laughs> and on top of that, like it's got an emotional weight to it that like it like just took me by surprise when I saw it in theaters. And like it's just kind of it's actually kind of beautiful. Like it's like it's a it's an interesting movie. Like it's it's the type of thing that like. Only I feel like only James Gunn could have made at that point at yeah. that particular point in time, and like there's sort of like a craftsmanship to the way that it's designed and like yeah. the the flow of it and everything. Like you can just tell that that's somebody some the person who made this comes from like a uh, not even a modern film background but like almost a classic film background because I know he was a uh, he was in that uh, trauma camp, you know. So like yeah, I think that um yeah that movie that movie is actually uh, doesn't get enough love. Um, but yeah, like I like truthfully, like the Russos, man. Like I, I keep coming across videos of them talking about like you know their uh, their time on the in the Marvel universe, and still even today, even now, I'm sort of like I don't understand why any of this worked. Like they came off of Arrested Development, <laughs> like you know, what yeah, I mean? exactly. And yeah, it was weird. You know, and like they were mostly like they were this this brother duo, and I was fortunate enough to see them talk at a, in Georgetown like about two years ago when Infinity War came out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just like it's really fascinating to see them uh, uh, see their efforts put on screen, and then like also uh, Christopher was it uh, Marcus and, uh, and McFeely, the screenwriters. Yes. Like, there's just a clear love for the material that is undeniable in those movies that the Russos do. Um, and also, yeah, I think that Joss Whedon, I even like Age of Ultron. I think that like I know people think uh, Age of Ultron is a little goofy, but at the same time, like in retrospect, I yeah, kind of yeah. feel like if you go if you watch. Uh, why am I blanking the name? If you watch Endgame and you go back and watch, uh, like, uh, if you watch Infinity War and Endgame and then go back, back and watch Age of Ultron, you'll see a lot of threads that yeah. they were just setting up for, like, the long term. And not even, like, the obvious stuff, like the, you know, Thor, like, going mm -hmm. to the pool, the reflecting pool or whatever, like, you know, just, like, other stuff. Um, also, there's that great scene in Age of Ultron where uh, it's, like, after all the, the big uh, knockdown drag out fight at the end, uh, Ultron walks up to um, uh, uh, Vision trying to escape and like they have this exchange and I just love the final words. It's like uh Ultron calls him unbearably naive and Vision's <laughs> like, Well, I was born yesterday and that's it. <laughs> you know, I just like I think that's just only Joss yeah. Whedon write that and like it's just really it just plays out so well. What yeah. about you? Um Yeah man. Uh, uh, you know you're right on the Guardians films. Uh, they they were just really well done, and uh, that ending when we lose Yondu, um, because I, I've uh, it reminded me of my father's relationship. That's actually like really personally touching me because my father was in the military, and uh, the the song that played during that whole uh, you know uh, when they sent him off into you know his ashes into space, and all the rest of the guardians are out there, and uh, the whole I forgot the uh, the, the reverse. Of the um, Reavers, yes. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, that song, uh, Cat Stevens. Uh, yeah. Cat Stevens was this was the singer on that. But one of my dad's favorite musicians, and something that he said when he passed, he wants uh, Cat Stevens to be played. So that kind of really, oh, wow. really just hit me. In the gut. Oh wow! Yeah. Like oh, because you know, guys losing his father figure. So that 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 right. touched me there. Yeah. Uh, you know, all these Marvel films really make me cry nowadays. <laughs> and. and, and, and balling throughout 
Um, and then uh, Black Panther. Uh, is, I would say Volume Two is up there. End Game is up there in Black Panther. Um, okay, nice, nice, and then Spider the Spider Man films are, have really been well done, uh, especially the later ones with Tom Holland. He really is Spider Man to me. Uh -huh. But um, it's hard to choose any of those films. I, I, I they kind of one up it every time they drop a new Marvel film, and that's what you know is great about Kevin Feige. What he's doing, uh, being behind this whole thing, is, yeah. is, is there's a love there. So yeah, uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so let, let's put it to now. We have the next uh, realm, the next, uh, the next. Uh, oh yeah. What do you call it? Next phase. Um, Although I'm kind of upset, sad about everything, and actually, well, since we have you on here and you're a Spidey fan as well, how do you f feel with you know we just got far from home, but now he's really going to be far from home because yeah. Sony and Disney are kind of <laughs> going back and forth. I haven't put said my say on either or because being you know as we as creators and being on the other side of the coin, we you know there's there's a lot of things involved. I'm sure oh, everybody yeah. wants to to a proper solution, but it is what it is. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, where, where do you want to see coming up in the next phase? Or which particular group of heroes or film that was already announced? Or who would you like to see that hasn't been touched on yet and be brought to the big screen? Uh, we actually, so we talked about this a little bit on today's uh, previous World Weekly show. And I, I kind of had a cranky answer. <laughs> it, was, it was a bit of a, I was, I was a bit, I'm a bit annoyed by, uh, I, you know, I think I'm really, I'm really big on finality like i like like you know conclusions like and especially yeah. when they're really good and i feel like endgame gave us a really good conclusion um and so i am well i'm curious about certain things uh if i'll put it like this if the marvel cinematic universe just stopped today or like stopped back in may i would have been fine i would have been yeah. like i never i never would have thought that we have gotten this far and like it's also great to see a company that you've been rooting for since you were a kid like yeah. finally get the sort of pop culture relevance yes. that, that that dc has enjoyed for decades true you know very true um so i you know i was just i was i so that this idea of like this kind of like now this this little blemish on the mcu right this imperfect uh, aspect of the mcu where tom holland will no longer be spider-man in the mcu maybe we'll see no. um uh, uh, I kind of was like, eh, okay, like you know, to my to my own surprise, I was like, all right, fine. I mean, but at yeah. the same time, I like uh, at the same time, some of the announcements from San Diego and then also D twenty three. I'm very curious about Mahershala, Mahershala Ali as Blade. Yeah, uh, I know a lot of people love Black Panther, but I love Blade, <laughs> <laughs> and that's oh, not to yeah. play. It's not to pit black guy against black guy. It's just that ultimately, like when given an option between those two characters, like Blade, I always, I always like the street level characters a little bit more. So Blade, Blade and Luke yeah. Cage were like my people, like you know. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, this, this, this Doctor Strange movie that they're 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 oh, talking yeah. about. Yeah, this is that's interesting. Like the fact that it's going to have Wanda in it. Yeah, and like, yeah, that it's going to be about the multiverse and like this thing that the ancient one teased in the movie. Um, it's really interesting. I'm also curious how they're going to walk back some of the things they said in Far From Home about the multiverse too, because that was that's a little confusing. But mm -hmm. I say those are my two big ones. I'm like, I'm very curious where they're going with that. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm with you on the Doctor Strange film. I'm curious. Yeah, there's been so many. Uh, rumors and innuendo about that, and mm -hmm. but uh, I'm pretty excited for what's going to happen with that. And uh, you know, I'm leaving it there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just <laughs> <laughs> too difficult. It's too difficult. Um, right? uh, what else did it? Uh, I, I think we're gonna end it off with uh, uh, you know, again, while we enjoy all of these uh, uh, heroes, villains, and comics. Uh, let's not forget the people that are delivering it to us. Yes, Your absolutely. favorite Marvel creative team of all time and or artist, writer, uh, who who are your favorites uh, that have given us all these great stories? Um, uh, so actually, when we were talking about runs, I realized I forgot one run that I absolutely love. This is actually a Spider-Man run. And uh, actually, hold on. I, this, one I can pull, <laughs> this one I can pull out. <laughs> Readily available. Readily available. Well, maybe not readily, but like it's <laughs> definitely here. Um, but that's right. You can still hear me. So, uh, but there was a Sal, Sal Basima and um, Sal Jam, 
Yeah, okay. and JM and JM Demetrius. Uh, okay. I think I'm saying his name right. I like I loved their run of Spectacular Spider-Man, yes. and in recent years, I feel like it's kind of fell down the memory hole a little bit. Okay, but they did such a phenomenal job. Here it is. Got it. <laughs> they did such a phenomenal job of like their inner turmoil of Peter Parker and their relationship with Harry Osborn, and I have just loved this run. Um, and it doesn't get talked about enough. And uh, truthfully, I felt that it was better than whatever they were doing current at the same time in the um, Amazing Spider-Man books. You know uh, what? I completely agree. Yeah, yeah but I like, remember all of that. Yeah, Sal's just, stuff was always. I, I didn't like it at first. I grew to appreciate Sal's right. style mm-hmm. much later on in life. You know? Yeah, because no, it was well, very, very sketchy. But he's he's insane. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And like, it's amazing to me that like, and also I got the. The anniversary holographic one, <laughs> but um, yeah, like no, they did. It was just, it was just a very emotional, very like uh, intense like storyline that ran oh, for like yeah. several issues, and like it was really just about like, you know, Harry Osborn uh, was literally living next door to Peter Parker and pretty much stalking him and making his life a living hell, and you know, to the point that MJ had started taking up cigarettes, started smoking cigarettes, <laughs> and like, you know, like her. And, Peter and MJ were kind of on the outs, and like uh, Liz Allen uh, was uh, pretty much like just having a mental breakdown in the comics every every issue. Yeah. Uh, and on top of that, like you know, you could see uh, Normie, their kid, kind of slowly turning into this little monster, and it was yeah. all because of all this violence that had been surrounding them. It was just really fascinating. Oh yeah, there was a, I, from what I recall a lot of very realistic sto- stuff going on. There was like mafia stuff. I remember yeah. being introduced to Rose. Uh, yeah. and the tomb, tombstone was in a lot. Yep. Robbie Robertson, uh-huh. some yeah. of the other players within the Daily Bugle showed up quite a bit. Yeah, um, uh-huh. yeah, it was some good stuff there. Yeah, it was good That's stuff. That's a fool right there. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, I need to do a deep. It I need to do a deep cut. Love. You're right. Yeah, I was like, I need to do a deep cut because I'm just looking over here at all the stuff from the 2000s. I need to go further back than that. So yeah. Okay. I'm like, yeah, that's a good run. So so Jam Dean Matisse and uh, Sal Buscema. Yeah, you know what? That's that's a Man, okay, you you just right. you got your mighty Marvel <laughs> March and Mary Society, if I can remember it, right, uh, yeah, Marvel yeah. Zombie uh, membership card in the mail. There you go. I that. got it. I was like, I'm like, I'm not doing this justice. I need to, I need to do a deeper dive. So yes, there you go. <laughs> what about you? Who, who can I pull? You know, you have again, you know, David Michelini, Tom McFarlane, Eric Larson, Jim Valentino. A lot of those guys that left and went to form Image Comics, uh, okay. but just killed it. But. Uh, you know what? I haven't heard him in a while, but you can thank the Captain America films for the the work that they did, especially Winter Soldier. But uh, I want to say it was John Cassidy on the art chores with who was the writer on that? Um, when they uh, introduced R- Winter Soldier, uh, John Nay Riber. Right? You know something what? I think yeah, John Nay Riber, who I met, he was also working on Tomb Raider at one point. But yes, yeah. the the, mm-hmm. the the we can thank John Reber's uh, Nay Riber and John Cassidy for giving us that lead up. When they had the, the balls to kill Cap, yeah. let you know Winter Soldier take his place or whatever. But just mm-hmm. everything that 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 storyline made me really enjoy Cap. And then when they took that into the films later on down the road, um, that sealed it. That that yeah, oh, Cap wait. is our guy. You know what? Well, actually, no, nothing about it. So Cass, Cass, Cassidy did the book with John A. Ryber, but that's uh, the Winter Soldier one was the Brew Baker and um, ah Steve Epting and Brew Baker. Yeah, yes. there you go. Steve Epstein, yeah. bigger. But Cassidy had a great, great run there, too. It yeah. started, yeah, mm-hmm. it, the, there was the relaunch with Reber and Cassidy, which right. it was, uh, yeah, because we had 9-11. Yep. There was some phenomenal mm-hmm. moments that Cassidy captured that, yeah, gave us hope during, you know, 9-11. And then, yeah, eventually Epting and the team with Winter yeah. Soldier, you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just, just all that. But just, there's been some great tandems, you know, all the way back, you know, to, to bring it back, back to the beginning. Comics 1000 uh, with Timely and Stanley Jack Kirby introducing us uh, to so many amazing characters in 1963, 64, or whatever, when right, Timely yeah. became Marvel. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, shout out to just all the amazing talent that came through. Every single and, one of them, yeah. And like, no, I've like I've I've been very fortunate enough to like uh, I've I did a I did a, a very extensive uh, article about Black Panther when the when the. Uh, uh, movie came out, and I was mm-hmm. fortunate enough to talk to uh, um, Don McGregor. I was fortunate enough to talk yes. to Roy Thomas. Um, I was fortunate enough to talk to Steve Englehart. Um, and like, they really did just like literally just regale me with these stories of like bullpen 
like, you know, things that happened inside the bullpen and like why these decisions were made and all this other stuff. And like, I pretty much mapped that character's uh, life, like, you know, life from uh, his inception in uh, 1966 all the way up until uh, uh, the movie came out and just by talking to all the creators. And yeah, it's just, you, you, you're, you discover pretty quickly that um, there's always a plan or there's always a goal. I should say mm-hmm. more specifically, yeah. but, but ultimately like, you know, all these things kind of factor into the creative process that they have to shift. And sometimes it's corporate, sometimes an editorial mandate where the editor just doesn't get it, you know, and other times it's just like a, a, a world events, like with the black yeah. Panther, like they made him black leopard for a couple of issues. Cause like of the black Panthers were considered a terrorist group by Richard Nixon. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah. So like, yeah, just really fascinating stuff, and like, yeah, just hats off to all those people who have worked in that company during these the several years and whatnot. And that's why I can't get too mad about uh, Sony and Disney because I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like the groundwork has already been laid there, and like, you know, I'm like, you know, Spider Man's still going to be Spider Man, and that rich history still exists. So if this can't extend to the movies anymore, that's okay. I'm fine with it. Yeah. Well, that that, that kind of ends it off right there. That's that's perfect. So yeah, with the seeds that have been planted, there's there's always a plan. So if you're always. a fan with, with what's going on, don't worry. You know we're older heads now. We we've, we've been there, done that. So yep, we can exactly. we can understand that. Mm-hmm. But um, benefits now, of age. We're here at Marvel Comics one thousand. Mm-hmm. What are the seeds we're gonna get from from this issue now going forward? I, I can't wait to read it to pick it up and uh, again i love the fact that you as you stated this is in continuity we're our, i'm sure planting the seeds for the next realm but we are celebrate everything that has come before with an um, amazing array of creative teams within this and uh, yeah going forward so uh troy jeffrey yeah. allen consumer marketing editor with previews world uh why don't you throw some of your socials and uh, as well uh you know where they can find you outside of previews world and Love to have you on again, my man. Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to talk comics at any given time, so I'm totally with that. Um, you know, pretty much, uh, I like. I'll just tell people like to check out the uh, previous world YouTube. I produce a uh, a good chunk of the videos there. Um, we're going to have one coming up, uh, which is an interview I did with Todd McFarlane. Uh, I got a multiple. I got a very very lengthy interview with John Romita Jr., which was also great. Um, and uh, we're going to be doing a video soon about like the toughest characters in comics and like that we compiled it like you know like a top five and of course i do a show every week called uh previews world weekly but so yeah definitely check out the youtube uh, uh that's just simply called previews world and um outside of that if you're just looking for me um just uh hit me up on instagram at tja comics like that's my handle all right my, my mystical powers my, my surprise like it's all on the screen click there go check out my <laughs> man give him a follow like share subscribe all of that i can't wait to see that stuff and man and everything you're saying, uh, I've been friends with the, the Jeppy family for a long time and uh, nice. all the, the, the squad there over at Previous World. Uh, nice. You guys do great stuff. And only if I were in Maryland, I'd, I'd be probably doing it with you. Yeah. Because uh, nah, they yeah. tell me, hey, move out to Maryland. I'm like, man, I'd love to. So mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm excited. and I'm living vicariously through you. Oh, uh, yeah. Just, I'm, I'm sure you're having a lot of fun as a fan as well with, with your day job. So uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. amazing. I can't wait to see all that stuff. Troy Jeffrey Allen, consumer marketing editor with Previews World. Make sure you go like, share, subscribe, all that. Follow him. He's got amazing work. And hopefully we can bring him on the NRW again one more time. Yeah, down for it. 100%. Oh, <laughs>